This is County Executive Steve Shu. You're listening to the Maryland Crabs Podcast. Live from a grungy kitchen table located in Annapolis, Maryland's scenic and historic capital, it's the Maryland Crabs Podcast. With each episode, your hosts, Tim Hamilton, John Frenet, and the occasional guest will dive in and pick apart the stuff that really matters most to you. We're too lazy to actually solve any of these problems, but we can definitely stir the pot. From schools, politics, parking in the fire lane, to those horrible people who drive BMWs. And here with this week's episode, live from the kitchen table, Tim Hamilton and John Frenet. It's the Maryland Crabs, and we are going into a, a literal storm as we go into this. This was good timing on our part. It is. So if we, rumbling, it's, that's the storm behind us. And if it goes dead silent, you know that we lost power. Because that's what we do. We're here in Annapolis. Right. And if it's <laughs> thunders too, I'll be going to have to pull yeah. John out from under the bed. Yeah. Hey, um, question. Before we get into this week's episode, which is kind of interesting, did you want to heap your praises on me before we get into the episode? Or did you want to wait until after the episode? So John is so stupidly competitive that I had the top downloaded podcast as of a couple weeks ago with Reed Rudner. That was, Reed Rudner. It was, it was a just, great podcast. It was a crab cake. It, that's yeah. all it was. And so that was the most downloaded one. And I might have mentioned that. Now, now I might tell you that one of the reasons why I think yours did so well, you didn't mention once that you were from Bethesda. She wouldn't know where that was from. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'll just throw that out there. But it was, it was <laughs> off the charts. And I may have mentioned that once or twice to John, like every hour. That's that, true. It was. It was. So that said, John's latest episode, the one that he did, he did the interview last week with... Dr. Fielder. Dr. Fielder, sorry. From Maryland, MHEC, Maryland Higher Education Commission. Right. That was off the charts. So the way we do this generally is, actually we joke about it, but there, there is a lot of work that goes into this, from the booking to the recording, that we got to get together and do an intro and outro, and then uh, generally you know, one of us will edit it, which takes hours, and then John usually uploads it, which takes a while. So, I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into this. So when I was editing this one, when he told me who it was, I did my eye roll again. And I used to be quiet a bit up, but now- Right, just, you use that same eye roll with uh, Skip Ald from the with, library. From the library, which was one of my favorite ones, in all honesty, it was. <laughs> I, I still do so much stuff from the library because of that podcast. But this one was off the charts because it was how to pay for college, how to pay for your kid's college. And they're just sitting on a pile of cash in Maryland. It's sort of like the old commercial. Remember that guy, the commercial at like one in the morning? And he was the guy that oh. had the the, the yeah. outfit, the suit with the, yep. the dollar, dollar signs. signs. My, my cousin used to work on those shoots uh, <laughs> for the commercials. That's funny. But that's how they are. They, they're giving away money from college. So I actually edited it and I listened to it uh, because I have two kids, one of whom may go to college. I don't know. Uh, the other one who... This is going to be just like a, a bum prison. Shake. I don't know. <laughs> well, the jury's out on that. But uh, it was actually a fascinating podcast. So if you haven't listened to it, go back and listen because it, they're giving away a ton of money for colleges. 105 million bucks. I mean, yeah, they can split that up. You're not going to get 105 million. Yeah, but, so. Right. But uh, it was a great episode. My hat's off to you. This is the last time I'll compliment you. Okay. Um, so don't get used to it. And, and game on, right? Game on. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, this week is, is actually, it's a, it's an event. It's a, a festival. And I know we've talked about festivals before, but this one is unique. This one is being done not by any particular promoter. It's being done by Anne Arundel County. And it's on September 29th, and it's called Twist and Stout, which is sort of a play on Twist and Shout. Yes, they know. And they know. Stout as in yes, beer. Yes, got it. Uh, Maryland Beer and Maryland Wine Festival. And this is the first time that it's been done at Quiet Waters Park. Which is awesome for me because I live right by Quiet Waters Park, so you I don't could, have to... You could ver virtually walk there. I could, in theory. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna, yeah. but I could. Yeah, the county has never allowed mass alcohol sales um, or alcohol events in the parks. I mean, you could you know, bring a cooler in and have a family picnic or a wedding or, or something like that at Quiet Waters Park. And it's the same thing. It's just, just like they're bringing like 18,000 coolers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's limited to 4,000 people. So it's not going to be a huge festival. And Quiet Waters, that is, a, that is an awesome venue. I, you, know, you know, I don't take advantage of Quiet Waters. For, I live maybe two miles away, if that. I have to pass it every day. And it really is a killer park. They, they built it right before I moved here. I know that there's a lot of static from the neighbors when they, because they thought about traffic Static and everything. from neighbors oh, in yeah, Annapolis? Yeah. yeah, a little no. bit. Well, usually that's Ward 1. And yeah, I'm picking on you, Ward 1. Maybe it was Ward 1 who's complaining, but we can hear the noise from over there. Although, remember they, like 15, 17 years ago, there at Cafe Orleans. Remember that place that uh -huh. was over there? It was that, that Creole place, yep. which was awesome. And they wanted to have music on some nights, and the, and the neighbors in Hillsmere lost their minds yeah. over that. Uh, but the park really is, it's incredible. It's a great venue. It really is. The county has some really special parks. I mean, they've got Downs Park up in Pasadena, which I've been in like twice. Uh, it's not the most convenient park to me. 
It's very similar to Quiet Waters, right on the water and everything else. Uh, you've got the Mayo Beach Park, which is only open like two days a year, which is really stupid. But yeah. uh, and, and they complained. They're about looking that. to do that. They're looking. There's several of them that they're working out, and I mean the parks really do have things. But anyhow, this week what we did is we. I went and met with Colleen Joseph, who is the director of marketing for the Anne Arundel County Recreation and Parks Department. And it could be the Parks and Recreation Department. I get them confused all the time, but they get... Oh, we'd have to research and that just takes they, work. They get, a, they get a little bit uptight with Rex and Parks and Parks and Rec, but you know what I mean. Um, but she's going to tell us all about Twist and Stout, and we're going to talk about it. It looks like a really fun event. So... Mark your calendars for September 29th. It's a Saturday at Quiet Waters Park in Annapolis. And um, you want to just get into it? Let's do it. Do you know what your teens are doing this summer? Don't be afraid to ask. The most recent Maryland Safe and Supportive School Survey shows three quarters of Annapolis high school students say it was fairly or very easy for students in their grade to get alcohol. Underage and binge drinking is very real in Annapolis. If you give them access to alcohol, you're not cool, but you are liable for the outcome. Create a safe environment for your teens and their friends this summer. If they need to talk, listen. If you need to talk, we'll listen. We're here for you and your children. We're ASAP, Annapolis Substance Abuse Prevention. ASAP facilitates healthy community change, prevents and reduces binge drinking, underage drinking, and alcohol-related auto crashes among youth and young adults through locally-led collaborations and evidence-based prevention strategies. Visit us at preventsubstanceabuse.org. This message is supported by SAMHSA and the Maryland Behavioral Health Administration. Here's to the teacher who spends her weekend helping children who need a little extra attention. To the soldier who missed the birth of his baby while serving overseas. To the EMT working full time and taking night classes. To the police officers and firefighters working long hours away from their families to keep our families safe. Here's to you, our hometown heroes. I'm Alan Hyatt, chairman and president of Severn Bank, and we know there are many heroes among us. Men and women who serve without expecting anything in return which is why we're honored to offer our Hometown Heroes program to educators, law enforcement officers, firefighters, first responders, healthcare workers, and military personnel. Whether you're opening a checking account or buying a new home, we're here to give back to you. Learn more about our Hometown Heroes program at SeverinBank.com. Severn Bank, here with you. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Hey, well, today we are sitting down with Colleen Joseph, who is the Chief Marketing Officer for the Anne Arundel County Recreation and Parks Department. How are you today? Good. Hi, John. Thanks for coming in. And, you know, typically we think, oh, OK, before you think that this is a big yawn or what are we talking to the marketing director for the Recreation and Parks? You've got a great new initiative that's coming out on September 29th. Yes. Twist and Stout. It's a beer, wine, food, music and art festival at our Crown Jewel Quiet Waters Park in Annapolis. And I have to say, when I first heard about this, I said, what a great name. And why didn't anybody think of that before? Because it's just such, it ties it into the whole dancing and um, the beer and the wine and the drinking and everything else. And Quiet Waters Park is a fantastic menu. It is. It's a beautiful park. And we, we say that in all our advertising, the Crown Jewel, it's a 323 acre beautiful park on the South River that has lots of amenities and trails. And we're so lucky and fortunate that we have a park like that to host this event. Well, one thing I've always said, I've, I thought it would be a great place for an event, a festival or other large events. And typically other than weddings and, you know, family picnics and you've got obviously the um, pops in the park and mm -hmm. some different concerts that go on there. The summer mm -hmm. concert series right. from Friends of Quiet Waters Park. But there's never been a really a public event with alcohol. So no. this is a first for you, right? No. Well, the Friends of Quiet Waters Park started about two years ago doing art in the park, um, with v hosting their galleries. And they have, you know, sell little glasses of wine and stuff, but not a big festival like that. Even though that's an event that draws people, this is the first festival of its kind for Anne Arundel County Recreation and Parks that where we're going to serve alcohol in the park. Is this something that may come out 
to uh, Downs Park or to Mayo Beach Park or some of the other facilities within the county or you don't know? or I think that if this is successful, we would take it in different ways to different places. Um, we just opened the historic concession building at Fort Smallwood Park right next to the boat ramp and it's on the water. And it's really pretty. And we've talked about, boy, wouldn't this be a great place to host like wine dinners right there on the water? So there are some opportunities in the future. Tell us a little bit about Twist and Stout. What do we what do we expect out of this? Is this um, going to be a big, uh, big drunk fest? Is it going to be a no. big dance fest? Is it going to be, you know, what, what's it? What do we expect? So I'm going to talk about the name a little bit okay. because several, a couple people have told us and we for the longest time called it the wine festival or the beer festival, trying to come up with the name. Well, that's that sounds pretty, pretty boring. apropos for government to yeah, come up with. Oh, let's call it the wine festival. And <laughs> I kept saying, no, no, we have to have something. I mean, there's a lot of fun names out there for these kind of festivals. So I'm going to give the credit to our director, Rick Anthony. He he called me in one day and he said, what about Twist and Stout? And I grabbed a piece of paper off of his desk and I said, I like it. And then I sketched out the logo. So we had the, uh, it's a combo brainchild. Was this something that came to him like in the middle of the night at 2 a.m.? He yeah, comes in the morning exactly. and says, aha, twist and stout. Exactly. And he called me in. And like I said, I got this the paper and started sketching it out. So we're happy with it. Our partners, Maryland Wineries Association, and their representatives said, why didn't I think of it? You know, we should trademark this. I think so. everybody, everybody says that. And I'll tell you, it's funny. You say Maryland Wineries. When I think of wine, and I, I'll say that I'll preface this by probably six years ago, Maryland would never have been on my radar. Right. Um, I mean, you think of, you know, California, you think of, you know, obviously, you know, Australia or maybe Spain, France, never think about Maryland. And we've really upped our game as far as wine in Maryland goes. Uh, I know that there's the Kegs and Corks Festival that does it earlier in the summer. Right. And that's sort of where I got turned on to some of all the different wineries that we have here. And they're really very, very solid. I mean, I know right here in Annapolis, we've got great, uh, yes. great frogs. Yep. And there, there's just so many of them. The Eastern Shore, you've got the uh, Eastern, Far Eastern Shore. Right. And there's St. Michael's Winery. And we have Thanksgiving Farm in South County, Anne Arundel County. So right now we'll get more too. But right now we're up to about 15 uh, Maryland wineries attending. And uh, so talking about Maryland Wineries Association, we partnered with them because they have the expertise. We're bringing the fun. We're bringing the bands and the artists and um, the food trucks and all of that. But they have the expertise and they represent Maryland Wineries Association and craft brewers. So, oh, so we'll, they represent the they craft represent beer too? They represent both. Um, so we'll be having um, craft beer. Now, is the craft beer limited to craft or, or is it limited to craft beer? Yes. Okay, so and Maryland. Okay, so can and so it's Maryland craft beer. Yes. So we're gonna get we're gonna see probably like Flying Dog and um, mm -hmm. and and whatnot there, but we're not probably not gonna see Budweiser. Correct. Oh, and uh, cool. Chesapeake Brewing they sure. they opened recently, I think, up in Odenton. So mm -hmm. they they're participating. That's right. Um, um, so we'll have more of the IPAs and things like that. And and again, Maryland is coming on the. Uh, on the radar as far as craft breweries. I mean, yes. I know you've got Jailbreak out in Laurel and right. there's uh, several others there. And I know uh, Comptroller Peter Francho is fighting the battle on uh, on helping them out. And That's we've right. Got, uh, Guinness is coming into Baltimore, so into the area. So that'll probably be a big infusion uh, into the beer scene there. Mm -hmm. um, so this is truly a Maryland festival. It is. Right it here is. in Anne Arundel County. Right. And because we have been contacted by some other um, distributors but we're really keeping it true to Maryland beer and wine. Um, so we're looking forward to having all those vendors represented and they'll be in the general admission area. And then uh, Bay Ridge Wine and Spirits here, that's our neighbor at Quiet Waters Park. Um, they're part of Maryland Wineries Association. That's like a trade association. Chuck so, Farr is a great partner. He, he's awesome. And David's been yep. helping us. So they're actually going to be set up in the VIP tent. So on the VIP tent, we'll still have Maryland wine and beers, but they'll be a little bit higher quality. And David and representatives from Bay Ridge Wine and Spirits will be there and they'll be talking to you about uh, the different wines and how to pair them. And in addition to the sampling for the day, all of the wineries will have glasses for sale and also bottles for sale. So you will be able to purchase some of the wine too. 
Um, also, Bay Ridge Wine and Spirits is going to bring a growler station and set up growlers to serve oh, they've the got Maryland a portable beer. Growler yeah. station. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So. Now, okay, okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about what's included. I mean, the admission is right. Range, so it's twenty. The, the tickets are general admission. Right. Is thirty dollars in advance. Tickets are on sale now. Mm -hmm. Twistandstout.org. There you All go. All one word. Twistandstout.org. Nice plug. <laughs> tickets are on sale now. Thirty dollars for general admission and forty dollars the day of. VIP tickets are seventy five dollars. And that includes a VIP tent, a uh, little higher quality porta pots, um, a little bit of food. We have working with Grumps and Smokehouse to provide some food. Also, in there. two of my favorites. Yep, and just a, a nice, you know, nice setup area and uh, a little baby special gift, a little larger sampling gift. But the general admission people will get tastings from all the wineries unlimited. Uh, they'll be given a little sampling glass when they come in. The bands, we have great bands happening that day. And right now, I think we have around 10 food trucks and we plan to have about 15 to 16. Wow. Okay. So this will, this will be fantastic. Now, this is all sort of centered around the amphitheater. That's right. So we're limiting the ticket sales to 4,000. So you need to go buy them now. Yes. So I, I know people are going to wait till the day of or figure it out. And we, we haven't really advertised that, but we're limited to 4,000 because of the parking at Quiet Waters. That's how many people we can fit in there. And we've done the formula with so many per car. So um, anything that's beyond the visitor center, the road will be closed there. And that'll be the whole festival with all the tents. We're going to have retailers, crafters, information. Of course, we'll have EMTs on site and so, the wineries. So the Quiet Waters Park will actually be closed on the 29th. It will be. And it's a ticketed event yeah. only. And so, I mean, but will festival goers have the run of the park, if you will? Yes. As well? They absolutely can. So if you want to take a break and walk on some of the beautiful trails or go down to the waterfront. And... Yeah, or go up to the visitor center and look at the gallery. You'll get a wristband when you come in and then you can go anywhere. But people that don't have a wristband won't be allowed in. And the parking, as you know, at Quiet Waters goes almost all the way out to um, Hillsmere Road. Sure. So we are going to have vans. Uh, at We'll have shuttle stops. So you'll be able to take a van from your parking spot all the way they'll drop you off right at the top of the hill of the festival uh, even our step we're not even letting our staff park on site they're parking off at the some of the elementary schools so we can reserve every parking spot for the festival goers that's fine i guess if tickets are if they are available at the day of the event i guess you would purchase them at the guard check right is that you what just come have? down to the well you'll come down to the festival and we're working with mission ticks Okay. So they'll be there selling tickets. If it's sold out, we'll do our best to let everybody know on social media. And, and that, 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 that will be when you put out the I told you so. Yeah. <laughs> so because we'll have to limit it. If we find that we still have tickets in demand after we're sold out, then that's when we'll talk about expanding and having offsite parking in future years. So, Fantastic. So what what else do we, what else do we have? Is it kid friendly? I mean, obviously they're not doing drink and not. I mean, are, is there stuff for kids to do? And obviously, other than the park, there is not. This is really an adult driven event. Uh, so I mentioned the general admission and VIP tickets. We also have a designated driver or under twenty one ticket for twenty five dollars. They get free water and they get to enjoy everything else um, that the park offers. We actually have Essentia. I don't know if them, they've come on as a sponsor and they'll be providing free water for everybody. Very nice. So um, you, you said in the beginning how it was. Uh, OK, so we covered food, we've covered wine, we've mm -hmm. covered beer, we've covered music. And you said art. Art. I think this is what makes us different and how we've included the Friends of Quiet Waters Park. Anybody no, no, I want to interrupt you real quickly. The Friends of Quiet Waters Park is a separate nonprofit entity. That's right. That, okay, a little bit of a history, I think, is probably in order mm -hmm. here. Quiet Waters Park was a farm at one point. Yes. And I'm going to show my ignorance here. Okay. That at one point, the county, you know, whether it was going up against development or something like that, the county said, hey, no, we need to buy this and preserve That's it. That's right. That was former county executive Jim Lighthizer. Okay. And uh, so he kind of fought against everybody else was saying, no, they could have the taxes and the tax base if they made it houses, but he fought and uh, people thought that it would bring people from outside into Anne Arundel County. And now it's so beautiful. And if you look at the real estate ads, they'll say located near Quiet, Quiet Waters, Waters Park. Park. So all of our regional parks have a friends group, which is a nonprofit volunteer group and they have a board. 
And they work um, like they raise money during the summer concert series. You'll see that they take donations. The Art in the Park I mentioned before, they take donations for that. They get sponsors for the concerts and they work hard to raise money for the park. And by raising money for the park, um, then that allows them to give money to the park for improvements. Okay. Um, we've had the Friends of Quiet Waters Park help with various things, even if it's buying a badly needed pickup truck that, you know, hasn't been funded. But they do things to improve the park. Some of the money from the art in the gallery goes to the park. So this is supplementing the county's budget, which is obviously funded by tax dollars. Right. And they help run things. They help run the summer concert series. They volunteer at events. So they are a benefactor of this event. Uh, right now, the Friends are have a nature center campaign. They want to build a nature center in the upstairs of the Quiet Waters Visitor Center, and they need some funding for that. So they're helping us advertise and volunteering at this event, and they're a benefactor. And then I was talking to you about this last week. Our second benefactor is going to be the Capital Gazette Memorial Fund. Fantastic. And yeah, we're really happy about that. And we'll be providing uh, money to that fund, which, if you read about it, is to support uh, people that are going to go into journalism at the University of Maryland in the names of the reporters that we lost. A couple, this is, three this weeks is one ago. of two funds that is being administered by the uh, Community Foundation for Anne Arundel County. The yes. one is the Capital Gazette Families Fund, which is making distributions to the victims and employees that were there that are affected mm -hmm. and, and the families of those that we lost. And then there is the separate fund, which is the, scholar, the Capital Gazette Scholarship. I think Scholarship Fund is the, tip, the name of yeah. it. And that's the one that the uh, this festival will be supporting. That's correct. And not just this year. For, for as long as we have the festival, we'll keep donating to that. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And, the, and we'll keep donating to the friends until we get the visitor center. But we always have benefactors for our events. But going back to the art, because if you've been to Quiet Waters, we have that beautiful gallery where the exhibits change out. Mm -hmm. So we said, well, what can we do to make our festival a little bit different and really represent the, the park and what it's for? So we are going to have 10 plein air artists on site painting the festival. There'll be five in the morning and five in the afternoon. So they will be painting the festival as it happens. And the Friends of Quiet Waters Park will be hosting a little pop-up gallery on the festival grounds. So those 10 artists will have the plein air festival paintings for sale. And they'll also have three to five pieces of their artwork for sale. So if you go to twistandstout.org, we have some samples of their painting and bios for each of the artists. And those, those paintings will be for sale, all of them with a portion of the profits going to the friends. And we are going to have, we have an in-kind photographer, Jeff Jackson, and he'll be on site the day of the festival with video and still and drone photography. Great. So he's going to take digital images of all the paintings of the festival. And then we're gonna send out an email after the event to all the people that have bought tickets and ask them to vote. So the one that's picked will be our advertising and our poster for future Twist and Stout festivals. Very nice. So, so, yes. so you've got the community involved all the way through. So, right. um, well, this is fantastic. There's VIP, $75, you right. said. Uh, is that going to be more at the gate if no. there's available? No, and, okay. and they're, they're only about 10%, so they'll... We're only going to sell about 400, 450 of those. Okay. So the VIP tickets. And right now, I'm going to say it, right now, the ticket sales, most of them are VIP. So that's a good thing. But um, You know, it's, it's, it's <laughs> funny. It hit on the, my key thing on whenever I do a VIP. It's like the upgraded bathrooms. Yes. You know, if, if they say it's an air conditioning bathroom, I'm, I'm like, good. You know, throw in parking. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, if I don't have to stand in line. I know there have been some festivals where, it, you know, you stand in line for a, an ID check and then yeah. you stand in line for something else. And it's just it drives you crazy. We're going to have lots in. of potties. And then we also have facilities at the park already. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the music a little bit because right. we've reached out to get some really fun bands. So our first band of the day is Saved by Zero. They're actually the based out of East. Of, they have the fix. Okay. And they do kind of 80s cover. That, both bands, my goal is I want to see people dancing. We're going to have a little roped off area in front of the stage. That is going to be the dance floor. And we want to see people up and moving. And our second band is called The Groove Spot. 
And they are, they perform all over the place at big festivals. They perform at Maryland Live. Um, and they are an 11 piece R&B band and they do R&B from every era. Um, they are in awesome costumes. They come out, they, they get the audience moving. From I, I Mo- met Motown them. to whatever. Yeah. I met them um, at Fido at a fundraiser for Gigi's Playhouse. And by the second song, I was, I got to talk to these folks. And here's the funny thing. So one's from Easton and one's from the D.C. area. Both lead singers were raised in Hillsmere Shores, right next to Quiet Waters. Isn't that unbelievable? That's bizarre. I know. That, that is bizarre. Well, I'll tell you, if you're looking to get uh, people up and dancing, I would say 80s covers. Yeah. Uh, and is, R&B. Is, 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 and R&B is, is the way to go because yeah. uh, I know you look at some of the 80s cover bands that play like at Union Jacks or something like that. Yeah. They're always selling out. They're always right. uh, Saved by Zero dancing. plays at Union Jacks a lot. Yeah. So we're moving along with ticket sales. I'm still looking for sponsors. Again, it's all on twistandstout.org. Right now we have, oh, about 16 sponsors like you, um, most of the media, WRNR, The Capitol, Bay Weekly. A lot of the right. media has come on board. Economic Development is a large sponsor. Chesapeake Financial Planning, Smokehouse, Grumps. I can't list them all off the That's... top of my head. Landscaping, Stallings Landscaping. They're all on the website. So there's plenty of opportunities for sponsorship. And we're doing great with food trucks and with wineries. But I am looking for some talented uh, retailers and crafters that might be a good fit for the festival, too. Okay. I will definitely put the word out for that. The other last question I have before we get going is um, Quiet Waters is a great park for dogs. It are is. pets available or pets allowed in during the festival? We we are not allowing pets during the festival. It's just a safety thing for the people and the dogs. And uh, we have my research in the last year, year and a half is I had to go to a lot of wine and beer festivals to do the research. And I notice there's it's, a t- many, it's a hell of a job, a but somebody's got to do it? it. But there's a lot of signs that say we love your furry friends, but not today. And it's for the safety of the animals, too. Since the festival will be set up in front of the dog park, the dog park will be closed. Okay. But certainly if people want to just walk into the park and use the trails to walk their dogs that day, not attending the festival, they could walk in, but they won't be able to drive in. Right. I've got you. That sort of begs the question then, too, is what do you, what do, you do about the walk-in people? We we talk about that a lot. I mean, if people want to come. Do we hunt them? No. <laughs> no. But the park is closed except for ticketed events. I know we have neighbors in Hillsmere that are able to get into the park through their back gate or whatever, but you won't be able to participate in the festival if you don't have a wristband. wristband. And we've gotten a couple of comments on social media, but it's one day and it's a good cause. So and if if somebody wants to go to all the trouble to to bucket, then okay, well, then we lost out a little bit on that. The parks Uh, are closed on Tuesday now, right now. So, you know, um, are there any other things that we need to know? Can we leave and come back? Throughout the day. Yes. Just keep your wristband on. Okay. Outside food and drink, I'm going to say, is probably a no-no. Uh, we allow people to bring coolers in in case they have dietary needs. Uh, so they can bring coolers in, but the coolers cannot contain any alcohol. Uh, okay. We do have Anne Arundel County Police working with us. We have hired a security company. So your bag will be checked at the beginning, and you, you we're not allowing any alcohol to come in. Well, sounds good. Now, who came up with this idea to start with to have a festival in Quiet Waters Park? Well, my job as the chief of marketing is to come up with a signature event every couple of years. So we started talking about this a couple years ago. And really, County Executive Steve Shu wanted to have an initiative so we could have a festival in Anne Arundel County that was really ours. That was really our festival. And, um, of course, my boss, Rick Anthony, our director, we've been talking about this for years. So finally... We all came together to make it happen. And I will tell you that it really is a county initiative. We have worked with the Office of Law and purchasing fire, police, everybody right now, OIT is helping us to get hot spots for the vendors. So we've had a lot of support from the county executive's office and our other agencies. And my marketing team is small. It's three people. So this is an all hands on deck department initiative. I have people doing marketing stuff that never in their wildest dreams did they think they would be doing marketing and events. Well, I, I for one, am really psyched about it. I think, uh, Colleen, I think the name is tremendous. I think the concept is really good. 
Uh, you can't beat the venue. Right. And uh, Twist and Stout. Get your tickets at twistandstout.org. And it's a partnership between the Maryland Wineries Association and the Anne Arundel County Department of the Anne Arundel County Recreation and Parks Department. Yes. Or is it the Department of Recreation? Department and Park? of Recreation. Department and Parks. of Recreation yeah, and Parks. It's a mouthful. Okay. You need an acronym. I know. We say DRP. Okay. DRP and Maryland Wineries Association bringing yeah. <laughs> Twist and Stout to you September 29th, Saturday at Quiet Waters Park. Right. Get your tickets now because they are limited. They will be selling out. I am quite sure of that. And I'm looking forward to it. And we'll see you there. Good. Thanks, John. <laughs> of course. It was perfect. That was, you know what? There's what's funny about that is it's, it's always John's stupid phone that he never mutes. So, <laughs> you know, we do that. Hey, we'll be back. We're going to listen to this. And then, like, we're quiet for a couple minutes. And then we go back into it. And the second that John pushed the button, his stupid phone went off. <laughs> there you go. I'm not going to even edit that out. I'm... <laughs> okay. You can take back that whole Dr. Fielder thing. Yeah, I did. That's fine. You're awful. Uh, there you go. Twist and stout, man. I am. You know what I'm really excited about? A Quiet Waters Park, I think, is a, you can't beat that location. Yeah. Uh, you do have run of the park while you're there, so you don't have to be just in the whole festival area. But that it's um, Maryland beers and Maryland just wines. Maryland beers. Yeah. So Budweiser, uh-uh, which you know, I kind of like. I do like my Bud Light. I I have been such a Miller Light guy for my entire life that any decent beers are kind of lost on me. Uh, Liz Murphy took me out a mm -hmm. few weeks ago, and we went out uh, beering and like back in the winter, and she showed me some really cool beers, and they were great. But I'm not going to do that on a, on a nightly basis. Right. But that said, there are really some some great Maryland beers that I like a lot. Yeah. So, it, but I mean, that's exciting. It's just just Maryland beers, and I thought that was very cool with the artists and the plein air artists that are going to be painting the actual festival. So I may like go stand in front of one of them. Just so I'm like in the painting. Isn't Naked. That, isn't that kind of cool? Uh, no. But uh, the wines too, as I know that Maryland wines have not had a great reputation, but they've actually improved a lot over the last few years. Well, that's exactly what I said to her. I said, you know, 10 years ago, Maryland wine it was, serpentine. was not on anybody's radar. Mm. Is um, it Ligonier? Or is that Lenore Manor? Or I don't know. But I mean, Bordy you know, and... You know, lo lo yeah, Bordy's been around for a while, but we, I mean, we've got great frogs. And they're actually, you know what? They're actually decent. We've they have a great facility. Great Frogs is right here in the city limits, and it's right down Spa Road. And it's they have probably a few couple acres down there of grapes that they grow. Yep. And I know they bring in a lot from the Eastern Shore. And they do a lot of events. And yeah. And they else. do. They have a beautiful event facility there. And we went for a tasting last summer around this time. And my wife, who is a snot, she drank the wine, and I thought she was going to make some snot. But comments. he loves you, Kathy. Yeah. Well, she didn't listen to this. <laughs> Shouldn't even know I have a podcast. <laughs> But it's uh, she. She was actually impressed with the wine. She actually bought some bottles, and she she goes, "This is." She goes, this is, I, "My expectations were low." I do. It's it's funny. I don't. I'm not a huge wine buyer. I like to drink wine. I go out and drink it. I don't buy a whole lot of bottles to drink at home. Uh, but when I do, I'm usually at Annabeth's for some reason, and that's where I buy Great Frogs. Oh, I, know, really? I, I go to many other liquor stores. Annabeth's on Maryland Ave. An Annabeth's on Maryland Ave. They're always open. Just... That's why I love them. They're open. Like you could go there at like midnight, and they're open. They get it. They do. They, they do. They one really of the do. few. But get your tickets. Twist and stout. I actually will go. Dot org. And I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some pressure on them. Oh, because there's food trucks there too, you said, right? Yep. yep. Yeah. 15 and counting. But I'm going to put some pressure on them and see if I can't get some free tickets to give away. So if Colleen, if you're listening to this, let's see if we can cough up some free tickets there, okay? Yeah, go, go talk to like Shoe. Go talk to Steve Shoe. See if he can uh, slide a few our way to give away um, for Twist and Stout. Uh, get your tickets. They're not expensive twistandstout.org and that's that hey market house is open and you've been i went so i went the first, i've not eaten i went the first night did we talk about this last time i think we did so we talked that it might be open last time we did and sure enough no no did. we went well i went that wednesday night or the tuesday night so it was a week ago and so it's like you know nine days when you hear this and i got there at 10 till 6 and it was going to be open till 6 and went in and it was just packed wall-to-wall -wall people and you know, Jody was there, and and Mayor Buckley was there, and I hung out with them. The place was just absolutely packed, and it was awesome. I got a beer there. Oh yeah, there was. Because my only complaint was that the the, the beer the, was warm. The, well, the beer, the mug was wine, but I mean, it was fine. It was, it was great. So I went for lunch on Friday, I think it was, and it was packed again. You know, just at lunchtime, I was really happy to see it. I've never seen it that packed, even back in the old days. So I got a burger. Burger, they can use a little little bit of work. I, mean, I thought it was a little pricey for what it was, but but there, but it was good. And I think uh, the sandwiches look good. You know, the whole pricing thing, though, is, and I mean, it's not, okay, it might be a little bit pricey, but you got to look at where you are. Right. I mean, you're, you're, you're paying it, it for the ambience, you're paying for the thing. It wasn't offensive. No. I got a burger, a chips, and a Diet Coke, and it came about a little over 10 bucks, which is 
you know, it's not too bad. I'd start, the, I'd start, the get, fries I'd, were I'd start getting, I'd start getting pissed off at about twelve bucks. Yeah, so on the, that the fry, I was gonna get a fries, but like the small fries was like four bucks, and I'm like, eh, I'm not in the mood for that today. It was, late, it was later in the day, and I didn't want to ruin my dinner, but, but it was packed. It was wall to wall people, and a lot of them looked local. A lot of them people looked like they worked down there. There was a lot of tourists. There was a mix of everybody, but it was. You see where they have, because if you haven't been there, probably most of you haven't yet, they have a jillion tables there, right. high top tables, low top tables. So the entire Ego Alley side, except for a little part it's for the bar. Pretty is, much view. It's, it's, yeah, it's all the tables and everything. Yeah. So And all the tables were taken, so it was packed. Yeah, I have not gotten there to eat yet. It's still on um, local hours, if you will. They're still doing it for 10 days where it's only open from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. And it was, it was kind of, you could tell it was a Friday because I got there around 1 and it's just, you saw... People who were obviously not tourists, they were locals and people who were probably sure. at work there. They were sitting there skimming some beers, looking over the Ego Alley. So it was it was hopping down there. Not a bad deal. Hope it works out. Hey, question for you. What did you do to piss off Scott McMullen? He, he was mad at us, huh? And we could have been... Know, the- here, listen to this. As uh, John Fernay, he's French, and Timothy Hamilton like to say that they like to peg this podcast as some sort of, um, we just uh, marginalize it. Yes, I'm saying that. Um, and just say that this podcast, we just uh, interview somebody next door. No, that's not correct at all. We've And if you look at the people we've interviewed, we go into depth of um, who we interview with, and we interview good storytellers. That's who we are interviewing. What did you say to him, Timothy, so that got him mad? He's mad because he called you French and he used my full name. So we could be we could be adults about this and text him, but this is probably no. a better way to communicate. <laughs> and say, hey, dude, what do you... Yeah, but he sounds mad at us. Yeah, I don't know. We never marginalized him. We love uh-uh. Scott. He's I love the podcast. He's the podfather. He is. I love the podcast. Who's, who's irritated with us. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to back down. More- I mean, he has talked to just everyday normal people. I mean, he's talked to bartenders and a yoga instructors and, and... You and me. And whatnot. Yeah, you and me. Go go figure. Um, but he's also I mean, he's had Alan Moyer. He's had the former mayor. He had the current mayor. He had the future mayor. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I mean, he's had business leaders. He had that wonderful episode Crosby. with Ralph Crosby. Yeah. He's had Carl Hinson. I mean, I mean, he's had some had some great guests. He also had the poet laureate for Annapolis. I think maybe he's trying to cause a beef because then we can get like that kind of cross podcast fight thing going, and it's yeah. good for us. You think? Maybe. I don't know that asshole. No, I, I, no, sorry. I love Scott. I love him. Now we know why you're called Timothy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know what we did to tick him off. But hey, Scott, if you're listening, let us know what you did to tick you off. We never marginalized you. We love the podcast, actually. You were the first one that did it. I think he's mad at you because he called you French. Yeah, and what's, what's the deal with that? Isn't it French? Frenet? I'm not, I'm not an immigrant. Isn't it French, though? It is. It's, it's got French roots. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's 16th century French. Who you Yeah, that's true. Well, I don't know. Have we pissed you off, Scott? Sorry. It was unintentional. Didn't mean to. It was John, right? Um, it had to be John. I don't, you know, I don't take people off. Other than that, didn't mean to marginalize you. Oh, I did take a couple of people off. There you go. Well, if you want to marginalize us, uh, send us an email at info at the Maryland Crabs dot com. Yeah, marginalize there. You can marginalize us on Twitter at MD Crabs Podcast. That's a great place to marginalize us. You could go to Facebook, which we were just talking about a little bit ago. Is kind of dead. I'm tired of Facebook. I don't, I'm not on Facebook much at all. Like I go on uh, for things I have to do business-wise, but to, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm never on Facebook anymore. It's dull. Yeah. Um, it's like looking in the refrigerator. There's nothing there. You go back. There's nothing yeah. there. But you can marginalize us there. You can look for the Maryland Crafts Podcast. For, yeah. We're on there. On Twitter, on the other hand. I, I love Twitter. Mm-hmm. There's plenty of places to marginalize us. If you've got suggestions on guests, topics, and everything else, feel free to send them our way as well. Uh, make sure you get your tickets to Twist and Stout at twistandstout.org. And um, is there anything else I'm forgetting? No, and we're trying a little experiment. I think we ought to tear down that fourth wall here. We're going a little bit shorter this week on purpose. I don't think that we miscounted. Yeah. We just want to see uh, if you guys like a little bit of a shorter podcast. We could ramble on forever as we are now. And the last two, we've actually gotten right into the meat of the podcast early on with Dr. Fielder. And then we save the BS in for the end. And so let us know how you like it. You know, we'll see how it is. I guess that's about it. Yep, that's right. about it. So here's, enjoy your short podcast. Use yep. the time wisely. Say goodbye, Timothy. Bye, Timothy. This has been the Maryland Crabs Podcast with Tim Hamilton and John Fernay. Sure to follow them in all the regular places, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and online at themarylandcrabs.com. Take a moment to rate us on iTunes. Now, get the hell out of my kitchen. Seriously, go! You're still here? It's over. 
Go home. Go.